Hello folks what's up today? Again I can make sense of you a super hit film. Bulev Train is an activity film that could without much of a stretch have been an enlivened film and frequently closely resembles one. The story happens on a slug train pitching across Japan, yet the majority of the film was shot on green screen sets, and the cityscapes and wide open spaces that the train rides through are chiefly miniatures and CGI. Its characters are a touch unique too, and purposely comic learned. All are either paid executioners or generally fierce people associated with the universe of wrongdoing, and the larger part either have hard feelings against one of different characters or are the object of resentment, and attempting to get away from the results of past activities. They will quite often have disastrous wistful histories or be simply pernicious and unavoidably, 30 years after the incomparable Tarantino realignment of the mid-90s, the greater part of them are big mouths who will speech at any individual who doesn't point a firearm at their head and request them to quiet down, and the tone blends winking dark satire and poker-confronted mash. Brad Pitt stars as Ladybug, a previous professional killer requested to board the train, take a satchel, and get off. He's supplanting another professional killer who became inaccessible without a second to spare, and he rejects his overseer's recommendation to convey a weapon since he just escaped outrage the executives and has revoked killing. Ladybug's kindred executioners are a plain group of desperate crackpots. Joey Lord is the sovereign, who acts like a blameless student shocked by the remorselessness of men, however quickly uncovers herself as a smart and heartless motor of obliteration. Brian Tyree Henry and Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's prepared to seem to be the malevolent alcoholic Begbie from the first, train spotting, are siblings who have gone from one mission to another piling up a body include apparently in the triple digits, and presently end up on the train safeguarding the satchel and accompanying the discouraged 20-something wastrel child, Logan Lehrman, of an unnerving kingpin known as the White Passing. The White Passing is a Russian who assumed control over a Yakuza family. His face isn't displayed for the rest of the story, it's more diversion for the crowd to oppose researching who plays him, since his projecting is perhaps of the best amazement in the entire thing. Hiroyuki Sonata is the senior, a turning gray yet at the same time deadly professional killer associated with the white demise, and Andrew Koji is the dad, the senior's child, clearly, they're out for retaliation since someone pushed the senior's grandson off a retail chain rooftop, placing him in a state of unconsciousness. They train able-bodied people, mixed with a wide range of different specialists in death. The plot at first appears objective-driven, spinning around the lethargic grandson and the metal folder case. Yet, as the content includes new contenders with everything else, and lays out that they're all extraneously associated, Bullet Train transforms into a good-for-nothing yet genuine explanation on destiny, karma, and karma, and Ladybug's steady, and frequently cleverly irritating, remarks regarding those matters, voiced in conversations through a controller, Sandra Bullock's Maria Scarab, heard through earpieces, begins to sound like an instruction manual for understanding what the film really is. Ladybug is somewhat of a post-credits jewels from a raw fiction subsequent to renouncing savagery, however he's actually caught in the life, and it has become more testing since he has settled at absolutely no point ever to get a weapon in the future. Characters are given such typeface on screen trailed by flashback montage presentations that sort fans will perceive from chiefs, like Quentin Tarantino, Kill Bill is by all accounts an essential impact, and fellow Richie, who spearheaded a specific brand of chap activity, in which verbal put-downs become little clench hands and blades conveyed against foes. The warriors pursue each other with firearms, cuts, their clench hands, and anything that object they can get their hands on, the satchel gets an exercise as both a protective weapon and a club. They chat as they battle, and some of the time when one of them passes on, the tone will move into a silly mourn that is frequently influencing a result of the cast's expertise, however that doesn't rouse profound feeling since the remainder of the film is so loquacious and shallow. The movie was coordinated by David Leach, a former trick facilitator and one-time coordinating associate of screen double Jean-Claude Van Damme and the movie stars Brad Pitt and Chad Stahlsky of the The John Wick series. He's turned into an expert in high-grade gymnastic pandemonium, having coordinated Deadpool 2, Nuclear Blonde, and, quick and irate presence, Hobbs and Shaw. It's difficult to reject that he's won the best with regards to supervising this kind of creation, and it's occasionally a kick seeing a shot train inclined toward its purposely ludicrous visuals, which some of the time come close to the psychedelia summoned in a speed racer. 
However, whether this kind of task is completely worth doing is an alternate matter. It seems necessary to have it two different ways, telling us, it's all light and faint and of no consequence, and simultaneously trying to ram us across the throat with a snapshot of mental energy, so we cry. Character The story of Henry and Taylor Johnson comes through, with the siblings communicating through adoration at any event as they break each other's chops, and the two entertainers have an instant rapport with the crowd despite flaunting cockney accents on display probably won't find a school creation of a My Fair Woman. The best accomplishment in the film is that Henry figures out how to take his personality's persistent correlation of every other person to Thomas the Tank Motor characters and make you not detest the trick on broad guideline. Yet, the rest feels constrained and dishonest. Bullet Train is at its best when it's a parody about so-called renegades who believe they're free specialists however are actually all only travelers on a train soaring starting with one station, then on to the next, neglectful of the longings of any singular riding on it. The dynamics and, it's every one of the awarbler, humor at last fix any perspective that could somehow sink its foundations into the watcher's brain. The venture is unique in one more manner too, the content source is a Japanese novel by Kotaro Isaka, and the characters were Japanese. Leech and Company, who acquired the task from Antoine Fuqua, who had needed to make a less jokey, stalwart on a train, type film, have re-evaluated the story universally, beginning with Leech's long-lasting screen accomplice Pitt. They had purportedly considered moving the story to Europe, yet chose to keep the Japanese setting at any rate, and have shielded this on grounds that Bullet Train is a fantastic film that could be set anywhere and is basically happening nowhere. The clarification doesn't wash, taking into account how subordinate, bullet train, is on Japanese signifiers and social mentalities, ruler's personality is fundamentally an anime of student, symbols show some major signs of life, also basically deracinating all of the center characters, put something aside for a small bunch of cliché yakuza, who have been given a Russian tribal leader displayed on Kaiser so's from, the typical suspects. Even in a dream, the last option appears to be a stretch, albeit the entertainers all sell it like the experts they are. On the off chance that nothing in the film is original either as a defense for projection, or as a tasteful direction, why not just go full Speed Racer, or the network, with it and own its green screen? The whole venture, and set it later, on another planet, or an alternate direction. It's basically a wonder hero film at any rate, then again, characters can't actually be resurrected after being killed. The outcome might have been a ridiculous masterpiece, rather than in a genuinely and tactically aggressive film that doesn't strike close to home or scholarly.